from DSI, and uh, yeah, I got a new record out, Banished by Sin. Beautiful, Glenn. Thanks for joining us today. Right on. Thanks for having me. No worries. So DSI's 13th album, Banished by Sin, came out last month, mate. So how's the early reception been for it? Um, Pretty amazing, man. Everybody's kind of a lot of people losing their shit on it, you know. <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> yeah, can, can, uh, tell, can tell us a bit about it from a musical point of view, bro, and what, what, what you were going for with it. Um, well, I mean, we're just like you say, man. We went through the whole COVID bullshit thing with everybody else, and we had a lot of time on our hands, so we put together a record. Uh, we were out of our contract, so we were just kind of like writing for the fun of it. And as we said, it, it is your thirteenth album, mate. So. Does it become easier or harder to, to sort of come up with new material the more you put out, I guess? I think when you don't have anybody breathing down your back, I think it's real, it's a whole lot easier, you know, when you don't have a record company bothering you or people calling you up every day, harassing you and, and giving you time limits and, and trying to rush you for this and that. I mean, we just did it on our own time and our, and our own pace and our own speed. And yeah, man, when you don't have that, it just came together really well for us. Timing of everything. Uh, you have quite a saying in the press release that musically, that the album is is a throwback to the nineteen nineties style of the band. Like how how so? I don't know about that. I just think that you know we recorded it in a way. I think a lot of people hear that. You know, they think when they hear it, they think of the old sounds and you know from the past and that and. Uh, I just think it was the way we recorded it. We got more back, I got more away from the whole Pro Tools uh, automation uh, sound. It went more to a real live amplifiers and and no plugins, no modeling. It's real amplifiers, real microphones, and recorded a record like you used to record. Yeah, cool. So. Uh, for, for the benefit of people like me, bro, who don't sort of really understand too much about that recording process, like how. How does how's it differ? Like you're saying, you wanted to go for the for the live amplified sound rather than rather than the sort of. Oh, uh, when you use with Pro Tools, when you use Pro Tools, it's um, it's uh, real easy to cut and paste. You know, play a part and and just cut and paste that part all over the record, um, or all over the particular song. And with uh, what we're doing is more like more or less like. You're playing the parts all the way through the song. You're not just, you know, playing. I mean, we use a little bit of that here and there, but it's with Pro Tools. You can. Uh, there's a lot of plugins that you can pick to use, like effects, guitar amplifiers, and cabinets. You know, I mean, you can model a, an amp sound through your Pro Tools program on your computer. And what happens is it starts to sound like elevator music after a while. It just yeah. sounds so mechanically made, you know, and it just kind of loses that, you know, that genuine, you know, feel and sound. Right. So in, in essence, it is, it's, it's sort of more or less like you're on stage playing it and it's getting recorded that way rather than pieced together. Is that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Our sound guy, our sound guy is who tracked us and that. And so, I mean, you're getting a live DSI sound, you know, that's really what it was. And it, it took a lot to keep that, you know, from getting away from us as far as the mixing and mastering and that losing that to compression and that. So it took a lot to keep everybody on board with the way I wanted it to sound. Cool. So can we go back to the early days of DSI, bro? Like you started the band back in Tampa, Florida in, in the late 1980s. So what was the musical climate like that gave birth to the band? And, and where did you fit in initially? Um, for me, man, I was down here um, um, for, you know, we had bands like Nasty Savage and Sabotage were like the first two band metal, you know, real metal bands in this area, you know, and I would go to those shows when I was a kid. And then, so what, what was your early, early vision for the band, I guess, and then how has it changed since? Um, I mean, I'm just, like I say, I don't think, I don't know, man, I never thought I would still be doing this at 57 years old, okay, so i um, I'm just really appreciative of the fact that I'm still healthy and that I can still do this. And as far as the vision of the band, man, it's always been just what I sing about, man. You know what I mean? What I do in that. I mean, we just always want to just try to keep the thing as heavy as, as possible and just, you know, keep bringing people back to what we do. 
So your 1990 self-titled debut album re really shook things up in the music world, mate. Like, was, was that your intent at the time? Were you looking to sort of come out and, and make make a difference, I guess, or were you sort of more just doing it for yourself? Yeah, I mean, that record was just like the record we just did. It was like one a record that we wrote for ourselves. We were we didn't have a record deal then. I mean, we wrote a record worth of material, and it was good. You know, I mean, we had time to really play with it, modify it, and and make it right. And when you have that kind of time and no pressure on you and that, you can do pretty good things, man. You can do some amazing things. So 35 years is a long time in the industry, bro. Like, there's, there's been lots of trends come and go in that time, but the side's always stayed true to yourself and your music. But have you ever been tempted to sort of change it up at all to fit in with, with the changing tides? Well, if I did, then everybody would be crying about that too. You know? <laughs> <True>. <laughs> So you don't even sing about, you know, I mean, what, what's there really left to sing about that hasn't been sung about? Yeah, that's you know, right. Think about it, right? Am I going to sing about getting my heart broken or am I sing about, you know, uh, how fast my car is or how ugly my wife is? I mean, what do you sing about at this point? You know, I, I think if you just stay true to yourself, I think you'll have a lot. I think that's part of key to my longevity is that I've never abandoned what I started. Yeah, true, true. So what's next for this side, bro? You got any shows coming up? Uh, we're going to be going to Europe in July and uh, U.S., Canada in September. And then we're going to go to South America, do some festivals. Um, coming back, I think we're going to do a seven-week run in April of 25 in Europe. And, um, yeah, we'd like to come down and back down to Australia and do some shows, man. Just, I need a credible, you know, a, a credible uh, promoter down there to handle it you know and if somebody can contact our agency or whatever that would we really consider coming back down and doing doing another run yeah. last time i was there i didn't really have a good time because i was going through some personal shit and uh so i didn't really get i didn't get a chance to enjoy myself like i did the first time i was there oh so. well, let's see if we can get you back and make amends brother i'll come down and eat some uh, seafood and and chase some kangaroos and uh, <laughs> be, stu <laughs> be stupid, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like fun to me, bro. Well, thanks very much for your time today, Ben. Um, the album Banished by Sin is out now, and she's a cracker. So best of luck, bro, and hopefully we'll see you down here. You will, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Thank it. You,